Hello my friends, welcome to Legacy of the Tall Drim. We are loading up into the loading screen for Sky Shield, mission number four. Uh, I am feeling not like super great today, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'm not sure that I'm going to play the greatest game in the history of mankind, but I think we're going to have a fine old time. So what were we doing last time? Oh, so the Abracadabra has been nerfed. <laughs> Sorry, I got to use it once <laughs> instantly. <laughs> And Hoki was like, that's broken. We're going to remove it, which is pretty funny. Uh, what else do we got? Let's go for... So this is Sky Shield. I need to think about what Sky Shield has and how I can try to make my best use out of it. I think that I want to be very, very aggressive during this mission, which says to me that maybe we should go for Destruction Wave and Deadly Charge. And then the Supplicant. I think that we want Alarak in the front doing all the tanking. We'll have Supplicants behind. And we're going to give the Slayer a shot, see how that goes. Oh yeah, we have hotkeys in the menu. Maybe it worked. I will seize control of it. That was a very fast cutscene. <laughs> like, really, really fast. That's pretty funny. So, uh, as we get into this, I actually want to talk about something. It is a concern that some people were having about the difficulties of this campaign. And I wanted to express my opinions on it. Because people are saying like, oh yeah, the Taldorim stuff is so OP, blah, 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 blah. And I don't actually agree with that. Of course. I think that it is a aspect of what you get when you get it, if that makes sense. So Legacy of the Void is very, very designed around the second toolbar ability on the Spear of a Doom. Right? That is the Orbital Strike or the Temporal Fields that you drop down that stun things or Solar Lance. They are all incredibly, incredibly powerful. And the entire campaign is basically built off of you having that global teleportation-based power. In this, you don't have that. We're going to have the ability to revive Alarak from the dead, and that's the closest we have. We don't have the ability to teleport anywhere we want on the map, or hit things across, uh, besides, like, warp-ins themselves. That means that as time goes on, and the campaign is more and more designed around it, we're going to be hit by multi-prongs that we're going to have to deal with. And I actually think that's very interesting. So in order to compensate for that, obviously we have Alarak, who is a very powerful hero. And the fact is that you get Alarak before you have access to the Spear of Dune abilities that the game is balanced around. So that is my thought. Well, I'm also not seeing any passive abilities here. The passives are incredibly, incredibly powerful. So it feels like we do get a very initial power boost. However, it may be that Alarak is not as powerful as a fully loaded Spear of a Dune. So I wouldn't worry about the difficulty too much. And remember that also, this is just brutal. Like, brutal's super easy. I don't want to say that I can beat brutal with my eyes closed, but I mean... <laughs> I, can beat I can beat part of Legacy of the Void, a good part of it, with my eyes closed. So, that's where we're at here. All right, let's get this blink over. There's some money over here that we got to grab. And then we're going to be able to start just blitzing our way through really, really quick. It prevents the Slayer from taking two damage after being attacked. Cannot occur more than once every five seconds. That's really, really good. It means that you can aggressively blink on top of things. Then you'll get hit once, and you'll do double damage with your thing, and then you have two seconds of immunity to, like, kill everybody. That feels very, very powerful. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I thought that I had that guy over there already. Whoops. That's a mistake. Oh, well, you know what? This is this is fine. I, I won't worry too much about these little things. What is this? Alarax attacks stun enemy units for two seconds. Heroic units are slowed. Enables the mothership scalding plasma and monolith towers electrostatic shock. Don't know what that is, but all right. I don't think I have a mothership right now, but at some point I will. Oh, I was told that the way the shield battery works has changed, so I'm going to build one of those. I was told to look at the pylon. It has no abilities, but people kept telling me to look at it, so I looked at it just for you. I'm going to build a cannon just to see how things go. Oh, hello. They even brought an SCV. Very interesting. And then, I guess we're going to get some of these... Oh, supplicants, you only get one of. They're actually pretty expensive. $100 per. 
It does appear that the enemy is doing a much more aggressive job of trying to reclaim these areas as well, compared to Brutal, which I think is good. So first things first, I'm going to head over. I like this Deploy Pylon ability. I actually like it quite a bit. So we're going to be able to just poke on in here. Deadliest charge. And get a lot of these bad boys. The supplicants are quite bulky. Ooh, we gotta be careful. They just don't do much damage. It's kind of a Alarak centric build. I think that can be fun. I'm just gonna try to experiment with many different types of Alaraks as I can. One of the things I don't like about Legacy of the Void is this mission specifically. It feels wrong that you don't unlock any new unit here. This is not a Legacy of the Taldurim problem by any means, it's just the design of the mission, and I don't think it's great. I feel like there should be something. It's weird that the end of this planet is where you get the Immortal, which I am excited to have. I love the Immortal, and what we saw of it so far, at least one of the Immortal variants looks quite good. Oh, it puts down a pylon for you. I was wondering what we were going to get. We gotta start making a move on though. I'm being quite slow because I was trying to make sure that I had everything up and ready to go. But I don't want things to take too long. Otherwise I might get a little time crunched at the end just depending on how big the defenses are. So we can take this down. I might wanna to try to take out that base. So the attack waves? No, I don't know if attack waves get built from it. We'll see. Then we can put this down, and it's going to start auto-shooting people, and that is my anti-air. I will say that Alarak does feel very powerful in these early stages of the campaign, though. However, his HP and armor don't change, from what I am understanding here. It's not like Kerrigan, who gets more and more powerful as time goes on. This is kind of what you see was what you get with him in terms of statistics. So, that is definitely interesting. And if this ends up, I'm not like confirming anything. I'm literally just going to say words here because I think it'd be a cool idea. And I want to float it out there. But if it were to be converted into the new campaign style that is played through the client, it would be not nearly as difficult to add a progression system for Alarak so that he's not as blatantly OP at the beginning. One of the things is when you're running it through the arcade, it can be pretty difficult to, holy crap. They just melted those buildings. My shield battery barely got to do anything there. That was insane. All right. That was kind of ridiculous. All right, Jim, we're going to see. This is just one of my tests for every single modder ever, is do they add anything to Jim Rayner over here? Is there a reason for him existing? My first thought is no, probably not. One thing that's interesting about this pylon is, oh, look at that. That is a Minsk Royal Guard. Sorry, it was. Yeah, one thing I like about it is that it uh, causes... Oh, what was I talking about? So this is a good example, actually, because I forgot what I was saying, is normally here, you just fire an orbital strike and you take out some of the defenders here, but you can't make shortcuts in this version, which is a thing that means a little bit right now, but is going to mean more and more and more in terms of difficulty as time goes on. Solar Lance... An orbital strike are just so insane. And I'm actually excited to play Legacy of the Void without them, you know? Okay, it's actually probably my favorite part about Stalkers Only was the fact that it had to be without any sort of Spear of a Dune abilities. It really changes up this campaign, and I think it makes it a lot more fun. Because the Spear of a Dune was more important than your units for the most part, and that felt kind of wrong. All right, so the bonus objective... Did I build all that? What? I didn't make all those. Did the bonus... Ob
Did the bonus objective give me guys over here? For for this one? That's all very weird. How much damage do these Reapers do? 106? Why do they do 106 damage against buildings? <laughs> That's so much! That is an unreasonable number! Oh, that's so funny. Can we just... No, we don't have vision. So good. That's a shame. Speak. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is a heck of a reaper. I've never seen a reaper that does even close to that much damage against buildings. That's insane. That's so funny to me. Oh. <laughs> I knew it felt wrong in that first attack, but I thought I just hadn't been paying attention or something. Alright, Alarak, head on forward. One thing that's interesting about the Supplicant is that it has that shield armor bonus, but then Alarak does all the tanking, so I'm not sure that it's actually worth upgrading. It's kind of cheap, so I guess it makes sense, but I find it a bit odd. Okay, Jim is still not doing anything of value over here, which is a shame. Someday, I want a version of this mission where you actually need... You know what? That'll, that'll be a nightmare. That'll be a bonus objective, and you're going to need Jim Rayner to help you out. It's going to be too hard otherwise. I can't believe Alarak had a hard time with those barriers. <laughs> Good old James. Uh, maybe that's too much of a change for a nightmare. I don't know. Hey, I found an attack wave. You just pop on over there. Take all these down. And there's only going to be one more to go. Yeah, I'm actually... I'm very interested in the later stages of this campaign for difficulty. Because I have a feeling that it's going to be easier in the early game. And harder in the late game. Which is... Probably how it should be, because Legacy of the Void has a very distinct problem where its early game is way harder than its late game, and I always found that very odd. Alright, let's jump on over here. Take these down. Because these missions very much feel like in the difficulty level of Wings of Liberty Brutal. Which generally is regarded as a pretty good campaign. You know, some people, many people would say best RTS ever made, you know. But, who are we to judge? Alrighty, that was Sky Shield. I always thought it was weird that those giant rocket things never do anything. It'd be kind of cool if there was a mission with, like, a mothership that you had to take down by arming those giant rockets or whatever. I don't know. It's... They're neat looking. The missile turrets of death, doom, and demise. Well, guys, thank you for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. I know that my talk... I didn't really... I was bad at cohesive thought today. I am a little bit sick. I apologize. I think I mentioned that earlier. But I, uh... Not doing super well in the whole focusing thing because I'm really tired and I'm going to go back to sleep. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.